Dutch limos used to be the preserve of the rich and famous, an exclusive form of transport that took the glitterati to premieres, or rehab. But these days, every Tom, Dick and Chaz now is hiring one. There's up to 18,000 of these stretch limos on UK roads, and they're full of hens and stags and other animalistic behaviour, all laying the foundations of a decent hangover. But are they safe? Actually, driver, can you pull over for a bit? I need to walk around the car knowledgeably. Now, it's worth remembering that no car ever starts out life as a stretch limo. Most of them were an American sedan. This one was a Lincoln Town car. And what they do is they cut it in half and basically weld in a huge tube full of wooden bar and TV equipment and disco lights. Now, we're always told that cut and shuts are bad because they're weak, but most of the time these things end up stronger than the car they were based on. So they're strong, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're safe. Limos are big and heavy, so the handling is, well, it's rather unwieldy. And then there's the distractions. Of course, the driver's being put off by loads of drunk people. Here, I'm brilliant, me! All in the back, deciding to throw themselves around. <laughs> it's not the best environment to concentrate. <laughs> and whereas modern cars are designed to have forgiving interiors with rounded edges, inside a limo, the potential hazards are everywhere. Cheers. First up, you've got big, blocky bits of stuff. If you were to cram that with your head, it wouldn't be great, would it? Even here, we've got a telly. And that's got some seriously sharp edges. Everyone's having a little drink, everything's fun, it's all brilliant until you have a crash, and then you get this in the back of your head at 60 miles an hour. Come to think of it, even the glasses aren't very cool. I think I'll put it away. <laughs> <laughs> then there's the question of seat belts. By law, you have to wear them in forward-facing seats, but somehow seat belts just don't seem part of stretch limo culture. <laughs> so, picture the scene. It's a big, heavy, hard-to-drive car bombing down the motorway late for the party, and it's full of boozed-up, unrestrained passengers all waving their bottoms out the window. Imagine what would happen if something went terribly wrong. In fact, you don't have to imagine what would happen, because we're going to show you. We've brought our long Lincoln to the Havoc area at Myra's Vehicle Testing Facility, where we're going to perform what we believe to be the world's first high-speed crash test of a stretch limousine. So, we're going to crash our limo here into this completely solid concrete block. Three crash test dummies will take the place of me and my lady friends. Two of the dummies will be sitting on the forward-facing seat, with one on the rear-facing seat. And, of course, to replicate real life, none of them will be wearing seat belts. This will be a 50-mile-an-hour impact, as if the limo had come a cropper on a motorway and hit a bridge support head-on. All we know is that this will be a very big bang. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my word! It's a tale of two cars. The front section of the original donor car completely crumples, while the stretched centre section of the car has stayed absolutely solid. You can almost see the line here, where it butts up against the bit they added. Now, it's obviously so strong and heavy and reinforced to carry all the weight of the car that it's just pushed itself right through the front of the car. Oh dear, that's a bit of a mess. OK. So, from what we can see, if you remember, I was sat here and the girl in the blue dress was sat next to me. As the car hit the wall and stopped dead, we carried on moving at 50 miles an hour, unhindered through the big, empty space of the limo's interior. And the girl in the blue dress here has ended up with her head 
buried in the dashboard after she's gone through the bulkhead. Whereas I, who was sat here, have gone, this is me, look. I've gone forward, hit the girl in the back seat, crushed her and then dragged her back to end up buried somewhere in the side wooden thing with the telly in. All decent limo companies in this country do provide seatbelts and strongly advise you to use them. Having seen this crash, I reckon only an idiot would ignore that advice. A direct hit! and it was as spectacular as my worst fears.